My name is Niall Meller from Acoustic Frontiers and today I'm going to talk to you about reflections. What they are, how to measure them and how to deal with them in your room. This page shows a simple listening room illustrated by the rectangle, a speaker illustrated by the square and a listener illustrated by the circle. The first sound that reaches the listener is the direct sound. The next set of sounds that reach the listener are the indirect sounds. These come from a number of locations. The first one and the one shown on this particular uh, diagram is the one from the right side wall. It's also important to realize that there is a reflection from the other side wall, the back wall, the front wall, and if this diagram was in three dimensions, the ceiling and the floor. There are also reflections that come off two walls, for example, one side wall, the other side wall, and then the listener, and so on and so forth. You can imagine that there's a large amount of reflections in a particular listening environment. In order to measure reflections, we use what's called an impulse response envelope or energy time curve measurement. This shows level in decibels, time in milliseconds, and then the plot is the actual uh, reflected sounds. Zero, zero milliseconds and zero dB is the direct sound, and then the measurement records the sound pressure level uh, at time on this line here. So for example, here at around 11 milliseconds, the sound pressure level recorded by the microphone is around uh, minus 8 dB. One of the targets for reflections is that they do not fall within 10 decibels of the direct sound. Unfortunately in this measurement you can see there are a number of peaks which cross, cross the 10 decibel mark. These are ones where we should look at treating the reflections to reduce the negative audible impact of the reflections on sound quality. This shows a number of directions from which reflections can arrive and here are my recommendations for how to treat them. For reflections arriving from the front wall these are classified as bad reflections and the same for reflections arriving from the rear wall. The best way to deal with these is to acoustically absorb them using a 3 inch minimum thick absorber. The reason to use 3 inch thick absorber is because this has a constant absorption down to around the transition frequency at 300 Hz. These bad reflections negatively impact sound staging, causing image spreading, uh, false spaciousness and can also negatively affect the timbre of the sound you hear and reduce the overall clarity of the music in your room. There are however good reflections which tend to arrive from uh, the side walls. These and the treatment of these is dependent upon your exact personal listening preferences. For those of you who prefer a more spacious sound, the best thing to do is to leave these reflective. For those of you who prefer a pinpoint sound, you would want to absorb these using absorber panels. For those of you who prefer a good balance between absorption and reflection, i.e. a spacious sound yet with clearly defined locations of instruments within the sound stage. The types of products to use are combination absorber diffuser products, like those from RPG, the bad panel, and also Primacoustic, the flexifuser. In this presentation, we've tried to teach you about room reflections, how to measure them, and what to do about them. For further information, contact Niall Meller at Acoustic Frontiers, www.acousticfrontiers.com.